Christian Parenting. Hey guys, it's Cynthia. Welcome to Pardon the Mess. I'm glad you're with us today. We're praying for our kids. And this week, we are beginning a series of a couple of weeks that we're going to pray over the Shema for our kids, which is found in Deuteronomy. But Jesus says in Mark 12, 30, quoting it, that we are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all of your strength. And so we'll start this week with heart, and then we'll take each one of these concepts the next few weeks to pray over our kids. And so in typical Cynthia fashion, I need to tell you a heart story before we kick this off. Not relevant to what we're praying, but funny, kind of funny. I think it's funny. One day I was at lunch with some friends a couple of years ago, some of my very best friends. And all of a sudden I had this like thud in my heart. Like I felt like it just skipped a beat or stopped or something. And I got a little dizzy and lightheaded. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, like something's going on with my heart. And so they all are like frantically like digging in their purse. So I'm like, oh, okay. They're going to get their cell phones. Like someone's going to call an ambulance. I'm like, well, it's probably best we check this out. And so the next thing I know, they all come out of their purses. I'm talking like three of the five with essential oils. Like they have all these different essential oils, peppermint, basil oil, all this stuff. And I'm like, what? And then they start arguing over which one would be most appropriate use for my condition. And they finally, uh, after going through all this, they, they come up with one and they start rubbing it on my head and behind my ears. And I'm like, what is going on here? And so I'm not knocking essential oils. I'm just saying if someone is having a cardiac episode, perhaps you call in the professionals, not your essential oils. And so within a few minutes, I felt fine. And by the way, which they attribute to their essential oils. And I had a little talking with them. I'm like, listen, when, as, as we get older and we start having more significant health issues, can we please pull out our phone when someone's having some cardiac scare as opposed to our essential oils? And so we chuckle all the time about our heart. But really, uh, there's nothing more scary than thinking about some of the things that can go wrong with our heart because we know it's the center of our physical body. And similarly, it is the center of our spiritual body. And so when we talk about the heart, that's the first thing that Jesus mentions, that we're to love him with is our heart. It's who we are. And a little bit of background on this greatest commandment. We have the lawyer. It's always the lawyer, right? that comes up to Jesus and is basically kind of trying to trick him and says, hey, what's the greatest commandment? And the context in this is that there's 613 commandments at this time. 248 are positive commandments and 613 are negative. And hey, kudos to the Pharisees for trying to figure out which ones are more important, less important. That's what they did. They categorize them based on what's really important, what's not as important. And so they're kind of trying to trip up Jesus on this. And Jesus responds, not with just some random answer, which by the way, I probably would have, of course, but he goes back and quotes Deuteronomy and he quotes the Shema. And he says, it's in Deuteronomy 6, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you, and listen to this, this is why I love it so much, besides the fact Jesus said it, but listen to this. He says, these are to be on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. We're to talk about loving God with our heart, soul, mind, strength all the time with our kids. Like if that's the most important commandment, and that's what they say in the Old Testament that we are to be teaching our kids, Jesus would have known this as a child. This would have been some of the first scripture that he learned. And this is critical with our kids. And so this next several weeks, I really want us to focus on what it means to love our love God this way in our lives. And so with heart, like we said, that's the center of who we are. And I think what we realize if we've been walking the road of life very long is that what's in our heart is what fills our days. Literally, if you want to know what's in your heart or your kid's heart, then see how they're spending their days. And when you love God with your heart, we're talking about loving with our emotions, our decisions, our desires. And so I think if we can start praying for our kids and for ourselves to spend time with God, this isn't about a list of rules and we need to feel bad because maybe we're not loving God with our heart and who we are very well. No, this is loving God by spending time with Him. And when you start spending time with the Lord in the morning, when we start praying to Him during the day, when we teach our kids how to go to God all day long, 
He starts to change our desires. You know how it talks about that in Psalm 37, about how the desires of our heart start to change. And the more time we spend with them, the more we start doing God things. We have God thoughts. And that's how we begin to love him with our heart, is by spending that time with him. And then he starts transforming the things that we desire, the things we want to do. And we end up starting to want to do the things that he has for our lives. And we start loving the things that he loves. And when we start thinking about loving the things that God loves, I think this is important. What does God love? And scripture is pretty clear on it. It says in 1 John 4, 7 to 8, that God loves his people. And so we need to be loving people well. Matthew 6, 12 through 15 says God loves a forgiving heart. John 15, 14 says God loves obedience. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 says that God loves a cheerful giver. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7 says God loves humility. James 4, 8, he loves spending time with us. And then in the Psalms, it says God loves righteousness and justice. So think about these things. Are we loving people? Do we have a forgiving heart? Are we obedient, cheerful givers, humble? Do we spend time with them? Do we love righteousness and justice? What does that look like if we love the things that God loves? And that all comes from our heart. It's flowing from our heart. And the thing about our heart that's interesting, remember when you went to VBS in like fourth grade with the felt board and they talked about how we are created with this God-shaped hole in our heart and that nothing can feel it but God. And so we're always searching after that thing until we know our creator. And that's absolutely true. Except for the thing is that little hole in our heart, we try to stuff it with other things that don't quite fit right. We try to stuff it with things like our identity. We try to stuff it with Netflix, our finances, our resources, travel, um, redoing our homes. We try to fill that little spot in our heart because we long for something more, but we don't fill it with the right things. And our kids do that too with their activities, with their identity, with popularity. And so we're praying that we fill that only with God and not these cheap substitutes for the real things of God. Our heart matters. The Bible talks a lot about our heart and what stems from our heart. And so I'm going to leave you with a few of those verses that I think are really important. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from your heart. Wow. Matthew 6.21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Proverbs 27.19, As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. And that's what we're talking about. Our lives are going to reflect what our heart is. And then Psalm 19, 14, may these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. I think that can be our prayer. May it be pleasing in your sight, Lord, what you're seeing in our heart. So let's pray that for our kids this week. Let me lead us in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for our hearts. I thank you for every heartbeat physically that we have. We know it's from you. We thank you for every heartbeat you give our children. Thank you, Lord, just from their Um, very beginnings, the very first heartbeat you ever gave our kids. Thank you for that. And for everyone from now until they are with you someday. And we just pray, Lord, that we can love you spiritually well from our hearts, Lord, that we know that our heart is a reflection of what we love and how we spend our days. And it's critical because it's what we do with our time and how we worship you. So Lord, I pray for our children. I pray that they will learn to spend time with you, that we will lead them to do that well, that we model it well, and that in doing that and spending time with you, they realize this is not a list of rules. This is not something that's um, a measuring stick for them, but it's a relationship and that you will change their desires. You will change the things that they love and they want in their lives, Lord, and that they will live God-sized dreams and hopes and chase after things you love when they do that. Lord, help them where they fill their heart, all those places where they fill their heart, where we fill our heart with things that are cheap substitutes for you, Lord. I just pray that you'll convict us and that the Holy Spirit will speak into that and that, Lord, we will stop doing that and we'll turn back to you. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us a Shema. I thank you that you give us this very visual of speaking about it in the mornings, at night, tying it on the doorpost, Lord. That's beautiful. And just help us to do that, Lord, in our homes, to love you well with our heart. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for being with me this morning. And we will, the next couple weeks, like I said, we'll be praying soul, mind, and strength the next several weeks over our kids. But this week it's heart. So be praying over the hearts of your children. And of course, if they have not accepted the Lord into their heart, they have accepted Jesus. Start there. Let's pray that this week. Pray John 3, 16 over our kids. I'm grateful for you. You know your days are busy. So as always, thank you for joining us as we pardon the mess.